Praise the Lord. All right, so as we pray together, everybody is standing up. Thank you very much. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, we thank you for this Bible study tonight. We glorify your name because you are God. You are worthy of our praises. You are worthy of our studying your word. Thank you for the revelation of the word. And we pray that tonight you will show light and shed light. On this word, we're going to study tonight in Jesus' name. I will pray that as your word has declared, the entrance of your word will bring light in every heart, every life, and every family in Jesus' name. We're praying that as a result of what we study today, our lives will become better and brighter. Our Christian work will become more satisfying and pleasing unto you in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, where we have been ignorant, the knowledge of your word will throw light on every part of our lifestyle in Jesus' name. Your knowledge is light. Fellowship with you is light. And the presence of God in our lives also brings light. Therefore, Lord, we pray, light, spiritual light, moral light. You put in every one of our lives, even tonight in Jesus' name. Keep us awake as we study. And we pray, Lord, you apply the word to every part of our lives. That those who see us will know we are being in the presence of the Lord, hearing, listening, studying his word. Bless your people tonight, your Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give me a good, good amen. amen. Thank you very much. You can sit down. Tonight we come to our Bible study once again. And we're back to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to read to you from verse 1. Matthew chapter 5. And seeing the multitudes... He went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth, and he touched them. We're told that Jesus Christ, as we look at chapter 4, he had been going about all Galilee, and he had been teaching and preaching and healing the sick, threefold ministry, teaching the word preaching the word, and then making the blessing of the word come into their lives, healing them. And then we're told, after he had done all that, he then appeared on the mountain top, And we're told that his disciples came unto him. Disciples always come to the Lord. Disciples always come to the Master. And there is a magnet, there is a pool, there is a drawing attraction that draws the disciples, the followers, after the Lord Jesus Christ. And then when we come, he does something to us. He gives us something. We're told that when those disciples came, he began to teach them. He taught them. And it is what he taught them, that is what we're learning today. Because we're followers of Christ. Because we ourselves are disciples of the Lord. It says in verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He must open the door of the kingdom and allow the people to become partakers of the grace of the kingdom before he teaches them the standard or the principles of the kingdom. And if you are here today, I want to tell you, the door is open. Christ is the door into the kingdom. And it is as you enter through that door into the kingdom, then he begins to teach you what are the principles or the practices of life in the kingdom. And then he says in verse 4, Blessed are they that mourn, mourning before merriment, sorrow before singing, sadness, before gladness, and conviction, before conversion. You see, if you're going to actually have the mercy of the Lord and the joy of the Lord, it begins with mourning. 
mourning for your sin. That's what David did. He mourned for his sin. That's when after, after mourning for his sin, then he said, Give me the joy of thy salvation. If you do not mourn for your sin, you'll not be able to see the comfort of the Lord in your life. But he says, Blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. From the very beginning of the ministry of Christ. He showed them. Yes, he healed them. He said, but he said, that's not the end of the, of the game. That's not the end of the ministry. Oh yes, he delivered the oppressed. But he said, that's not the end. The end, the goal, the desire of the Lord. The very purpose why he came is so that all these people that came to know him, they will see the Lord at last. And therefore he began to tell them, he said, blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. As you come to the Bible study, we we'll rejoice with you. We congratulate you that you are the Bible study. As you pray and God answers your prayers and we hear your testimony, we rejoice with you. As you get healed, as you get delivered, as many wonderful things are done for you in your life, we rejoice with you. But the healing is not the end of the matter. And getting married is not the end of the matter. Getting blessed is not the end of the matter. Having success in life is not the end of the matter. The end of the matter. The reason why you study the word, the reason why you come to the Lord is that you will see the Lord. Have that in your mind every time. Why are you there? Why are you studying the Bible? Why did you get converted? Why did you give your life to the Lord? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, not the troubleshooters, the peacemakers. You know, when you come to the Lord, all contention and conflict will pass away. And you take joy in having the Prince of Peace in your heart and living by the peace of the prince in your life and then you become a peace lover a peace giver and a peace maker and you follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of god only those are the children of god blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you as he outlined the life of the people that follow him. And he outlined the principles of kingdom life, kingdom living. He now begins to tell them to identify them. Who do you think you are, by the way? Do you know who you are? And do you know who your Lord is? And he started last week, last, uh, last Monday, revealing to us who Christ is. Who Christians are the people that have got Christ in their hearts and in their lives he began to reveal who we are what's our wars why are we here what do we do he tells us in verse 13 ye are the salt of the earth sweeting some lives around you ye are the salt of the earth be pure and white Ye are the salt of the earth. Be different from the pepper and the onion in the society. Ye are the salt of the earth. Make life sweet for somebody. 
around you in your web of relationships because ye are the salt of the earth become indispensable important essential necessary because ye are the salt of the earth retard and slow down and decrease and delay the corruption in the world that's a function of the salt because ye are the salt of the earth have peace within yourselves and have salt within you and now he tells us today in the passage you are looking at today we need to link everything up you don't just jump into the middle of the river you come from the shore and then you move on and on until you get into the depths of the river we need to actually go to the shore and see how we enter into the kingdom and then we mourn then we become meek then we become thirsty after righteousness then we become merciful and then we become pure and then we're persecuted and yet we do not lose our sweetness our savor our saltiness and now we see today who we are you are the light of the world come with me to matthew chapter 5 matthew chapter 5 verse 14 ye are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, under a cover, under a table, under a container. We do not light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it gives light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. As Jesus told his own disciples, his own people, and he said, Ye are the salt of the earth, and also ye are the light of the world. Have you noticed that uh, there's nothing you can do without the light? That means, number one, light is essential. And no matter what part of the world in which you are, what can you do without the light? Whatever intelligence you have, whatever skill you have, whatever ability you have, how far can you go without the light? Light is essential. Light is important. There might be many other things you don't have and you're still looking for. If you have the light, the light will lead you, guide you, direct you to have what you don't have. Light is essential. Light is important. Light is indispensable. It's indispensable. You cannot do without it. We need the light. And light brings joy. Are you found in your community around you there? Whenever there is no electricity. And everywhere is dark. And you, you're very careful. You go slowly when it's dark. You almost became stagnant when it's dark. Your thinking is affected when it's dark. Your life is at a standstill when it's dark. The family is all crowded in a particular corner. Children, don't move around. Don't stumble. Don't hurt yourself. There is no light. Joy is gone when there is no light. All of a sudden, when the electricity comes back, and there is light everywhere, and everywhere is bright, did you hear the shouting and the rejoicing and the whistling of those little, little children? Everything comes alive again because light has come. Light is so important. Even little children recognize that. And they rejoice when the light comes. And Jesus Christ said, Ye are the light of the world. Do you realize we're talking about the light? You know, sometimes when all of us as we're here now, the light of this community, when we all go, 
everywhere looks so solemn and everywhere looks so dark when we all go it's like when you're having a retreat and then we all come to that retreat location light coming from there light see them jumping down from the bus and see them jumping down from all the lorries that co they come with and then that whole community comes alive and the people that want to sell this and sell this and sell and, and there's a time of joy celebration why because all the lights in all these various places are coming together and then all of a sudden we say light has come and then the children they are happy to be there we're going to start on Friday. I said we're starting on Friday. And everywhere, everywhere, you know, you saw the, the two little lies from here, from here, from there. Everybody coming together. All of a sudden over here in Lagos at the DLCC, when the light all of a sudden comes together. And then the children's section, the youth section, the adult section, and then everybody walking around. And you know, it's more than the light you see of the electricity. I mean, this is light. Where are the lights? I said, where are the lights? Even your hands carry some shining element. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so Jesus Christ wanted to impress it upon his own people. He said, ye are the light of the world. And thank God, we are the light of the world. And I pray that your light will shine more and more in Jesus' name. We're going to divide the study to three parts. Number one, reflecting Christ's light. Reflecting Christ's light. Number two, radiant Christian living. Radiant Christian living. Number three, renewed, consistent life. Let's come to number one, reflecting Christ's light. As the Lord Jesus Christ said, that we, the believers, are the light of the world, we must remind ourselves that from the Old Testament, all through to the New Testament, God is referred to, I mean God the Father. I mean God the Almighty is referred to as the light. And then even in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is referred to as the light. And if there is any light, we shine forth. Any light we portray, it is the light of God within us and the light of Christ within us. We're told in Psalm 27 verse 1. Psalm 27. And I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 27 verse 1. Telling us about the identity or the symbolism of God as light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. There we are. The Almighty God, God is my light and my salvation. As we come to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9, reading from verse 2. Isaiah chapter 9, we're reading verse 2. It's telling us about Christ now, the people that watch in darkness. I've seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death. Among the, upon them as the light shines. That's talking about Christ in prophetic language. Isaiah saw the Lord coming. And as he saw the Lord coming, he said, This is light. And it will soon appear. And the people that sit in darkness, they will see that light. And in that same chapter, chapter, chapter 9, verse 6, born to us, a child is born. It's saying, he is coming. He's the son of God. A child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And then he says, the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Notice what we read in Isaiah chapter 
9 verse 2 and see that fulfilled in Matthew Matthew chapter 4 Matthew chapter 4 reading there from verse 13 in Matthew chapter 4 verse 13 and leaving Nazareth he came and dwelt in Capernaum which is upon the sea coast in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali that it may be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea beyond Jordan Galilee of the Gentiles the people which search in darkness saw a great light and to them which search in the region of and the shadow of death light is sprung up and so then you understand God is light. In him is no darkness at all. That you'll find in First John chapter 1. Talking about God who is light. First John chapter 1 verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him. And declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. God is light. And if you know God, then the light of God will be shining through you. And you will be reflecting the light of God within you. And then Christ can refer to you that you are the light of the world. Christ himself is light. We're told that in a number of places in John, Gospel according to St. John. John chapter 1. Reading from verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The light of Christ shining in darkness, and the, de and the darkness cannot overpower it, and the darkness cannot overwhelm it. And the darkness cannot put out the light. And the darkness cannot quench the light. And the darkness cannot be stronger than the light. No matter how terrible darkness is. A little light of a little candle will bring that darkness to an end. That's what it says. That if the light of a little candle can put out the darkness, the terrible darkness in the room, in the community. How much more the light of Christ, that this light of Christ, a great light, supernatural light, undimed light, a kind of light, underived, original, absolute light. That it shines in the darkness, the gross darkness of the world. And the darkness of the world comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to be a witness of the light. That all men through him might believe. He was not, John was not the light. But he was sent to be a witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. That's Christ. His own light lightens every other person. His own light puts darkness away from every other person, every person that believes in him. That was the true light that lighteth every man that comes into the world. Talking about this Christ as light. John chapter 8 verse 12. John 8 verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. If anybody has any light at all, is derived from Christ. 
is the reflection of the light of Christ shining, beaming forth through you and I. He said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Chapter 9, verse 5. John chapter 9, verse 5. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. It says, I'm, as long as I'm here. And he came so he can put away our darkness. He came so he can make atonement for our sins. He came so that the darkness of ignorance can be taken away from our lives. The darkness of idolatry can be taken away from our lives. He came so that the darkness of sin can be wiped away from our lives. He came so that the darkness of bad habits, the darkness of crimes can be taken away from our lives. Christ came so that all our darkness, powers of darkness, and the practice of darkness, and the lifestyle of darkness, and the habits of darkness, and the shady, shady deals that we do, that must not see the light of day. Christ came so that all those things can be taken away from our lives. And he said, as long as I'm here, I am the light of the world. In John chapter 12, John chapter 12, reading from verse 36. John 12, verse 36. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. He's telling us now how this light can come into our lives. And now we cannot begin to shine forth and show forth and beam forth that light of the Lord in our lives. It says, while you have the light, believe in the light that you might become the children of light. In verse 46 of that same chapter 12, it says, I'm coming light into the world. I am come, Christ said, a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. We will not abide in darkness. You see then what the Lord is telling us. That when you come to know him, then darkness is gone. And light comes in in your heart. By the way, this light, what does it do? How do you recognize it? Number one, light penetrates and eliminates darkness. Light penetrates darkness and light eliminates darkness in your office if there's some shady things they're doing some things they're trying to color or change or scratch off that you do not want the auditors to know that's the work of darkness and then you come as a child of god ye are the light of the world and the light shining forth and beaming forth through you will then penetrate that office, that community, and will eliminate the darkness in that place. Number two, light enlightens and enlarges a person's vision. Have you noticed early in the morning when there's not much light? And then you come out. And you're straining your eyes to see. You cannot see very well. And you cannot see the objects that are there. And then the distance you see is very short. But then the light comes in the horizon. In the sky. And here light shines. And there's something that, that light does. That light will enlighten your vision. And it will enlarge your vision you see more you know more and you go farther because of the light that has come and if you are a child of god 
and cries to his light who says i will dwell in them and i will walk in them and they shall be my sons and my daughter says the lord almighty if that god who is light is dwelling in you and if christ the light of the world has come to make his abode in your heart then anywhere you go you make people see your life will make them see who they will say i see i didn't know that before as you are telling me now and i see your lifestyle and i see your character I, now i can tell now i see that that was wrong i didn't know that i've always done that and my conscience didn't even tell me anything but now you're brightening my vision and you broaden my vision from your lifestyle you make me see what i never saw before number three light reveals and opens up the truth of an area and clears the way for the truth light reveals and clears the way that's why you should always tell the truth because when you tell the truth you clear the way for people to see what they never saw before number four light guides and directs the way you go and then leads us along the right path number five light differentiates distinguishes makes a difference between the right and the wrong way and it's like when somebody is a real christian it's like you have two children in the family one is born again the other is not born again one is walking in darkness whatever he tells you you have to question him again are you sure you are telling me the truth because you know that he's not in the light and then after you've gone you come back again and say tell me that story again tell me give me that information again give me that understanding that knowledge again but i told you before i want to hear it again because you know since there's no light inside your heart over there we need to check up and check over and over again darkness but the other fellow is born again two children in the family and then anytime you ask anything you know he's telling you the truth and then after you have spoken you've listened to first you've listened to the second and then you say the difference is clear the difference is clear you can see the light on his face you can see the light in his language you can see the light in his demeanor there's no hypocrisy there is no pretense there is no backhanded deal the difference is clear it's the light that makes the difference in the character in the behavior in the lifestyle in the presentation of the people is the is the light that makes it different and when light comes into your life and light comes through your life the people can see the difference the difference is clear number six light warns us of the dangers that lie ahead a person's path and if you are light your behavior will show people of the danger lying ahead of them and you know they will ask you without even you telling them don't you smoke anymore no why don't you smoke well i realize the danger i've got enough trouble with my health already i don't want to compound my health problem 
I see. I never, I never thought you could leave smoking. Well, the grace of God has come to me. I thank you for telling me that. I want to seek that same grace as well. I see that you used to follow after women, and even though you had a wife at home, uh, I remember you used to have girlfriends and women friends. So look, I don't do that again. Why? Why don't you do that again? I realize the danger, the disease, the death. I was inviting for myself the premature death, and then I went to the Lord, and then He cleared it up for me. He forgave me of my past and he healed me of the disease I brought upon myself. And then I said, no more. Now the light is shining. People are coming to ask you, why don't you do this again? Why don't you run after this again? You say, no, I cannot. That's your light shining. Because light wants people. And your life will be a warning unto the people. Your life will be pricking their consciences. Because of the way you live, you show light of the dangers ahead of the people. Number seven, light protects a person from the danger. It doesn't just warn you of the danger. It doesn't just reveal and tell you and inform you about the danger. It also protects you from the dangers of darkness, or stumbling, or falling, or injuring yourself. Welcome to point number two. Radiant Christian living. Radiant Christian living. Welcome to Matthew chapter 5. In Matthew chapter 5, I'm reading to you from verse 14. Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. I just think about this and it says ye are the light of the world ye are the light of the world the light of the world i want you to imagine a whole city not having light and the darkness is very terrible and the darkness is very deep i want you to think of a country a whole country where there's no light and the whole light is gone and there's blackness and darkness in the whole country i want you to think of a whole continent like africa in every city in every country no light at all and everything comes to a standstill the factories stand still. The institutions, they all come to a stand still because there is no light. I want you to think of the whole world, the whole world, all the continents of the world. No light at all. What am I saying? I'm saying a day is coming. It's called the day of the rapture. When the dead in Christ shall rise, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. And all the lights in every city and every village, every town, every state and every country, every continent, the whole world, all the light is gone. And the people of God, the light of the world, they are all gone. What a terrible darkness will be in this world on that day. And if you are here, I pray you'll not be here. If by any means of carelessness, you are here. And the whole light of the world is gone. 
the darkness that will happen then. That's why violence will multiply. Crime will multiply. Magic and occultism will multiply. Wars will multiply. Death, desolation will multiply. Every negative satanic sin will multiply because the whole light is gone. Because it says, ye are the light of the world. While we are here now, while we have the privilege and the chance now, live a radiant Christian life. And then be like that city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Let's look at John chapter 5. John chapter 5. We're looking at verse 33 and then verse 35. John chapter 5. Living a radiant life, a shining life, a beautiful life, a convincing life, a convicting life, a life that draws other people into the truth. Radiant Christian living. John chapter 5, I'm reading verse 33. In John chapter 5, verse 33, he sent unto John. And he bear witness unto the truth. Verse 35. He was a burning and a shining light. And ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. He talks about John. And he said, you couldn't miss John. Anywhere he was. The people will rush there. You couldn't miss a man like that. He was like a city set on a hill. His life reached out to many people around. His influence went beyond the wilderness where he was. In Luke chapter 1, this radiant light, let's get a glimpse of him. John, uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 15. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. This man will be a disciplined man, a devoted man, a dedicated man, a man in whom the Lord will have delight. This man will be a shining light. He will not spoil his life, defile his life with the wine and the strong drink of the people. And then it says, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. That was the shining light, John. We're told in Mark chapter 6. John, Mark chapter 6, verse 20. For Herod feared John. Herod feared John. How could a king fear John? Evil people fear the light. Adulterers fear the light. Thieves fear the light the light as the light is coming and it's dawn the thieves run away they want to go and find shelter somewhere and hide somewhere wicked people fear the light herod feared john knowing that he was a just man and an holy man and an holy and observed him and when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. Matthew chapter 14. John was a bright shining light. Here is how you can show that you are light. Here is how to demonstrate that you are light. Be like John. Be just and righteous. And even if you are the lonely voice,
standing on the truth, emphasizing the truth, be like John, uncompromising in your stand. Be like John, fearless and bold and courageous for the truth. Be like John, that people, however high they are, they'll be afraid of you. If they're not willing to walk in the light, in Matthew chapter 14, verses 3 and 4, for Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for a dire sake. His brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, For John said unto Herod, For John said unto him, Here is the light. How many people today are like this light? How many pastors today are like this light? How many preachers today are like this light? We're not even sending them to Herod to go and talk to Herod. It's just to talk to their members. It is not right for you to take your brother's wife. No, they will not be able to tell Herod. They will not be able to tell even a member of their local church. Oh, they say, I cannot tell you anything. When you go to the combined service, you will see the pastor. You will see the general superintendent. Don't you know what to tell me? Tell me. No, I cannot tell you when we go to the service. I'll make arrangement for you to tell somebody, to, to see somebody who can tell you. Why don't you tell him? You are afraid. How many people today can tell all these great, great men in a society who come to grace their meetings, uh, you know, with their personality? And we know the corruption. We know the immorality. We know everything. Can we tell them? No, we cannot tell them. All we want is their money. But John was that shining light. This is how we live the uncompromising life. A radiant life. That will be able to say by the grace of God. Like John. We're faithful. How many of us can even talk to our own little children? These children... There's nothing they can do to you. They're just little children. They might make a noise. They might cry. They might shout. They might frown. But they're little children. What can they do? To, your, to you as parents. How many of our parents can look at this child and say, Boy, shape up. Get converted. The parents are even afraid of their children. They cannot tell them the truth. How many of our workers can tell members in the church? When you come to Christ, you become a new creature. You don't run around again with the wrong crowd. You don't run around again with gangs and criminals. You give your life to the Lord and things are different. How many workers can tell the members we're afraid? And how many overseers can tell their people, this is wrong. We kind of avoid the truth. We are afraid for our lives. But you see, if you're like John, if you're like the light of the world, which Jesus said, ye are the light of the world. Here is the reason why you are light. You declare the truth unto the people. You say it in love, but you say it. You say it with wisdom, but you say it. You say it with explanation, but you say it. You say it firmly, but you say it. Anybody there that can talk to your husband and tell your husband the truth? 
The man is getting to near the maid. You know what's happening. And the maid is becoming so insolent. And so heady. And so stubborn. And you know that when little girls mates, when they behave like that to you wives, you know, something has been going on between the maid and the man, your husband. That's why those maids become so powerful and so strong. And how many of you wives can look at your husband eyeball to eyeball and say, my husband, I will... I, I, will, I will not want to miss you in heaven because of any relationship between this and that. Can you tell them how many men can talk to their wives and be the light to your wife and say, my wife, this is wrong. I'm afraid, pastor, because I'm not working. It's my wife who is working. She is the breadwinner. If I'm not careful and I tell her the truth, I might miss my lunch or my dinner. There we are. But you know, John, John was this just man. And he was this righteous man. And then we're told in that chapter 14, verse 4 of Matthew, For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. And so we need to understand what the Lord is telling us. Radiant Christian living. Live this life. And live it in such a beautiful, shining, bright, radiant way that people will know that there is light in this, our community. In Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Reading from verse 14. Philippians chapter 2 verse 14. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, in a crooked and perverse nation. You think about any country in the world, think about our country, think about your own country there. You see the wickedness. You see the corruption, the bribery, and the corruption. And the, the, the disease that go on, a lot of things swept under the carpet. That's where we're to shine as light. And it says, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. In verse 16, holding forth the word of life. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ. That I have not run in vain. Neither labored in vain. I pray we will shine as light. I said we will shine as light. And then what great reward we are going to have. On that final day. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. That's talking about your influence. Your influence to turn many away from wickedness. Your influence to turn many away from their sins. And then bringing them to the right line. To righteousness. And then it says, because your light was shining here on earth. Then you will shine forever and ever. As stars when you get to heaven. I pray you'll be there. Amen. Number three now, renewed consistent life. Renewed consistent life. We're coming back to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Reading from verse 15. 
Matthew chapter 5, verse 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. Let's go beyond men. Neither does God light a candle and put it under a bushel. Think about that. Neither does God give light unto a soul and hide that soul under a bushel. Neither does God give the light of grace into somebody's life and hide that light of grace under a bushel. Neither does God give light of knowledge unto a man and then put that light under a bushel. Neither does God give the light of spirituality into a man's life and hide that light under a bushel. If you are there and you are born again, the Lord has put the light of salvation inside you and he will not want to hide you under a bushel. He wants you to beam forth and shine forth that light. Tell other people the goal and the purpose of God in putting that light in you is to bring you up and bring you out and show you forth unto the people. Never will God put the light of salvation in his soul and hide that soul under a bushel. Are you a Christian? You have the light of Christ in you. And then I ask you, do you ever go out to do evangelism with the other brethren? No. I don't want to show myself. I don't want to reveal myself. You see, my personality, I like to hide somewhere in the crowd and just worship God in my heart. Never. Will God put the light of salvation in somebody and hide that person under a bushel? You see somebody and maybe he's, he has some skills. And you go to his house, he has a personal organ, keyboard. Or he has a musical instrument. And then you just knock and says so you are hearing some beautiful music. And then you come in. What? Were you the person playing? I thought I was listening to a kind of a cassette or CD. No, I'm the one. So you know music, of course. I knew this before I became born again. And the skill is there. Can you play some, you know, Christian music for me? Then he gets on the keyboard in his house. And then he runs his hand through the keyboard. And you say, watch. Are you a member of the choir in our church? No. I don't want to expose myself. I don't want people to know me. I don't want to show anything. All I want to do is just hide here inside my room. And be doing the music. Never. Will God put the light of spiritual gift into a person and put it under a bushel if you're doing that and you're not bringing forth the gift and let there be light and joy happiness glory in the worship in the service of the lord then you're doing something that god does not approve of now we men human beings it says neither will men we're talking about God, also about man. In verse 15, it says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. Why? So that it will give light unto all that are in the house. It will give light unto all that are in the house. That's the reason why the Lord has given us light. Light of salvation. That's what he has given us. 
the light of the knowledge of the truth. That's what he has given us. Bring it out. Make use of it. Influence other people. The light of a righteous life. Of a holy life. You are in your place of work. Praise the Lord. You are born again. Praise the Lord. You are sanctified and holy. Does your director know? Does your manager know? Do the colleagues and the co-workers know? No. I don't want to make a show. I just want to live my Christian life. Come into the church. Learn everything I can learn. And then go back home and just praise the Lord and serve the Lord quietly and timidly. No. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. Tell them what the Lord has done for you. Show them this knowledge of holiness and the light of sanctification. The beauty of a holy life. Reflect it. Beam it forth in your place of work. Everywhere you are, that they will know that's the light sitting on the desk there. That's the light going on in that place. And everybody can identify you because that's how the Lord wants you to be. That's why the Lord says in conclusion, let your light so shine before men, not behind men. I will shine when I leave the office behind men. I will shine when my in-laws are not there behind men. I will shine when my neighbors are not around behind men. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and then glorify your Father who is in heaven. We will do it. I said we will do it in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4. Reading from verse 18. It says in verse 18. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The path of the just is as the shining light. It shineth more and more. More and more. It's not going dim. It's going brighter. And the influence of that Christian man, that Christian woman, is going greater. The impact of his life, of his truth, of his forthrightness, of his frankness, of his steadfastness, the influence and the impact of his Christian life is becoming stronger and stronger. Because it says, the path of the just man will be shining brighter and brighter until that perfect day. And you see, we, we, we come back to this Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 15. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 15, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all. Think about that. And it giveth light unto all. And it giveth light unto all. All that are in the house. What was Jesus saying? He was saying it like in a symbolic form. Ye are the light, not of Nazareth. Don't stay only one place. Ye are the light, not of Jerusalem. Don't all stay in Jerusalem. Ye are the light, not of Israel. Don't only stay in one country. Ye are the light of the world. 
I wonder why those disciples never, they didn't get that in time. They didn't understand. Ye are the light of the world. Scatter. All around the world. Don't stay in one place. He told them before he left. Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem. Not first in Jerusalem. But both in Jerusalem. And in all Judea. And in Samaria. And to the uttermost part of the earth. That's what he wanted them to do. You are the salt of the earth. The whole earth. And you are the light of the world. The whole world. That you may give light to all. That are in the world. And then he said now. I'll be going away. Remember. Remember. Your sweetness. Your savor. Your spirituality. Your saltiness. Is for the whole world. Go everywhere. Jerusalem. Judea. Samaria, uttermost part of the earth. Remember, this light is to shine. Not just in one city, the light of the gospel. Beaming forth and shining forth through you in the whole world. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. What did they do? All the people that had land sold their land. And they brought the money to the apostles' feet. And they all stayed in Jerusalem. And then they had all these men full of the Holy Ghost. All in Jerusalem. Distributing food to the widows and everybody. And a big administration came up in Jerusalem. It's like Nimrod. Let's all get together. Genesis chapter 11. We're going to build a tower. Everybody will be here. So we are not scattered anywhere. And the Lord came to scatter them. By confusing their language. Because God has said. You fill up and replenish the earth. And now with the gospel. Reach out everywhere and they all stayed in jerusalem until acts chapter 8 acts chapter 8 verse 3 as for saul he made havoc of the church entering into every house and hailing men and women committed them to prison therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere Preaching the word about the project of all people bringing their money and staying in Jerusalem. The program had to be stopped. Why? Because the will of God is that we are salt of the earth, not of Jerusalem. Light of the world, not of Jerusalem. We must be everywhere. It's wonderful as we are here tonight. We gather to study. And then we scatter to share the gospel. We cannot all stay here. That's not the will of God. What a wonderful scene. If all of us will stay here. And then we can even have a school for all these our children. And then they go to school here. And then we have a market here. We do everything here. And we say these are believers. Deeper life city. And we all stay here. What a wonderful thing. No. What a terrible thing. What a bad thing. We are to scatter all over our students, our children to go to all the secondary schools in town. So we can have some salt here, some salt here, some salt there. Our members to work in every place, every office in town. So we can have some salt here, some light here, some salt here, some light there. 
our members to reach out in all, of, all over the countries. You are sent either as technical aid corps or you are sent either to go and study so that we are in all the countries. That's the will of God. We are the light of the world. We are not the light of a single city, a single community. We are to live everywhere and thank God we are doing it. I said, thank God we're doing it. And, uh, you know, if you're all in one place, that's bad. But it's when we scatter and we go to all the places where the Lord has appointed, then the blessings of God will be upon us. And they that were scattered, they were scattered everywhere. They went about preaching the word. will preach the word. Give me a good amen. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, more and more the light, more and more shining, more and more brighter and brighter. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 1. For the more then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus... That ye have, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. You've got the light shine more and more. You've got the spirituality demonstrated more and more. You've got the virtue of Christ, the righteousness of Christ demonstrate it more and more you've got the fruit of the spirit leave it out more and more first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 10 in verse 10 is telling us more and more first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 10 and indeed you do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia but we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase. How? Tell me out loud. More and more. I want, you, I want to ask you. Your own personal life. The year is now coming to an end. What did you do before you, that you are saying? I think I want to do less and less. All these, uh, you know, helping people, I want to do less and less. All these preaching to people, I want to do less and less. I want to think of my life, what I'm going to do, my family, myself. All this district work, helping people, counseling people, praying for people, teaching people, enlightening people. I want to do less and less. I'm thinking about myself. All this giving out to people, helping this one, raising up this one, teaching this one, lifting up that one. I want to do less and less. Because after all, all the people have been giving and helping and lifting up and serving. What have they done? How are they responding to me? I want you to do less and less. All this love, love, love. I want you to do less and less. And it shows in your life. As you drag your feet. I've been too zealous. I've been too active. I've been taking care of people too much. I've been too, too, too much, you know, passionate. Heaven, heaven, heaven. You must go to heaven. I'm even wondering now, what's the problem with me? Why am I so serious with, you know, other people? And these people are not bulging. I want you to do less and less. There you are. But the Lord is saying, if there is any challenge... That he wants to give you as you come to this Bible study at the end of this year. The Lord is saying, look at your life for this year. The light of the knowledge of God you have. And then the light of the ability of Christ in you. 
and the light of obedience to the word of God, the light of response to the word of God, getting up and doing what you ought to do. And the Lord is saying, instead of less and less, I want from you more and more, you will give it. More consecration, more holiness, more devotion, more seriousness, more evangelism, more light, more and more and more. You know, if you say less and less, did you see that kind of light that we sometimes regulate? When you turn it, you can turn it down, and then the brightness can be less and less and less until, let's say you were reading, for example, when it was bright, and as you are reading like this, and then somebody is turning it down, less and less and less, eventually, although the light is still there, it is useless now, because it's less and less. Look at your life. Less and less. Less and less. Less and less. You will become useless very soon. But this day, you are going to wake up. You can tune up and bring up that light again more and more. And we're going to have bright shining light in your community. Because the Lord is telling you tonight, as the year is coming to an end, is saying, ye are the light of the world. And you are the city that is set on a hill, and you cannot be hidden. Do men light a candle and put it under a bushel? Do they not put it on the, on the candlestick so that it will show light and beam light and shed light on all that, is, that are in the house? From tonight, your life will shine. And Christ will shine through you more and more in Jesus' name. You are going to rise up and commit yourself to the Lord. No more less and less. But now more and more. More and more. The light of the gospel. The light of salvation. The light of righteousness. The light of holiness. The light of truth. The light of relationship with the Lord. More and more. More and more. More and more. If you are not born again, the year is coming to a close. Young people, stay where you are. Young people, stay where you are. Young people, stay where you are. And pray. Thank you very much. Everybody now you are praying. You are telling the Lord. And you are saying, Lord, here am I today. I want this light of salvation to shine through me, to my community, in my life. I want to be a good influence in my community. A powerful influence in my community. You are the light of the world. In what way are you shining as light? Or are you bringing darkness or sin into all the people's life? Darkness of bad influence into all the people's lives? Darkness of unrighteousness into all the people's lives? Or are you giving yourself to shine forth? To shine forth. The knowledge, the light of the knowledge of truth. The light of the knowledge of the gospel. Shine it forth. Shine it forth. Shine it forth. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Let us know that you have day salvation. And that you have God living within you. Abiding within you. And you are making people to desire righteousness. Your life is being a good influence on people. Not an influence to make others backslide. Not an influence to make other, others drop their conviction. Not an influence to make people unrighteous and holy. You are holy yourself. 
Are you influencing people to desire holiness, righteousness? You're zealous. And you're influencing other people to manifest and demonstrate that same zeal. Let the light shine. Christ in you. The light of the world shining through you. The light of the word. The light of the doctrine. The doctrine of the word of God. Everybody can read that doctrine through you. Beautiful life. Holy life. Righteous life. Honest life. Dependable life. Light. Light of righteousness. Light of holiness. Shining forth through you. More and more. Not less and less. But more and more. More holiness. More humility, more obedience, more meekness and gentleness, more love, more zeal, more passion, more dedication, more consecration. More yieldedness to the will of God. More and more. The path of the just. Shining brighter and brighter. More and more. Unto the perfect day. Evangelism more and more. Good influence on other people more and more. Good influence on children. Good influence on the youth more and more. Teaching the truth by your life more and more. Dedication to the service of the Lord more and more. Consistent, radiant living. Christ-like, radiant living. Courageous, radiant living. Like John the Baptist. That you are not afraid to declare to the people in your community, in your world. How they ought to live by the demands of the Almighty God. More and more. More and more. What consecration are you making? As this year is running to its end. What commitment are you making to the Lord? As this year is running to its end. What change? Are you going to make as this year is running to its end more and more more and more more gentleness more meekness more peace Peace loving and peace making, more reconciliation, more righteousness, more obedience to the will of God, more brokenness, broken will, 
self will broken more and more more brokenness more surrender unto the lord ye are the light of the world ye are the light are you a light to your children light of salvation light of righteousness are you a light to your brothers and sisters around you good influence righteous influence on the brothers and the sisters around you are you a light to your co-workers an influence on honesty An influence of faithfulness. An influence of righteousness and holiness. Good influence. Good influence. What kind of influence are you? Good influence more and more. 